Welcome back to 5MinuteBibleStudy.com. Today we're talking about the church and the Protestant Reformation, part two. Last week I wrote an article, part one. Go back and read that and catch up. We ended with the question that was, did the reformers go too far in their response to the evils manifest in the Catholic Church that they witnessed? Basically, we went through a lot of the corruptions that we saw evident in the Catholic Church in the 1500s that was going on the same time the Bible was being translated. One of those evils was the doctrine of justification by works of merit. Basically, when a person does something, he is deserving God's grace. Now, the Reformers saw that doctrine. A lot of guys in that group, Martin Luther was a Catholic monk who went through the rituals of doing acts of penance, trying to earn God's salvation. So he was used to this concept. It was ingrained in him. And when he saw the corruptions of the church as he read the Bible for the first time in the common tongue, he started to realize there's something wrong with the Catholic Church's teaching on justification and on several different practices like the priesthood, purgatory, transubstantiation, go down the list. And so in a response to how disgusted they were and focusing on the subject of justification, they went to the total opposite end of the spectrum and said there is absolutely nothing that you have to do zilch to be saved just have faith in God's grace alone today we're going to approach a middle ground that's not the Catholic view of justification by merit or the Protestant view of justification by faith alone it's a middle ground which we do believe is a biblical perspective but let's prove the fact that indeed the Catholics do believe that because if you were to ask a Catholic on the road a, a lay person Catholic every time they're going to tell you we do not believe that so am I just reporting bad news? In fact, if you read a lot of their literature just by Catholic websites, they're going to deny this fact. But we should go to their official church dogma to find the real answer. And so we go to the 1500s Council of Trent, which was a council of bishops, cardinals, the Pope, to refute Protestant Reformation doctrine. And there you'll find this quotation. It says here, and I'm uh, translating a little bit because it's archaic language. The good works of a justified person are the gifts of God and not to the exclusion of merits of the justified person. And he being justified by the good works performed by him through the grace of God and merits of Jesus Christ, whose living member he is, does truly merit the increase of grace and eternal life. Again, he does truly merit the increase of grace and eternal life might want to pause the video now and reread that a couple of times to get the point that yes, official church dogma of the Catholic Church is that man is justified, at least on some level, because of works that he does. That's where the whole concept of sainthood comes from men who have done so many good works throughout their lives and deserve special mention and honorary status. So this is what the Reformers were upset with. And in response to this, this is what I'm about to show you, some of the theology that they came up with to show that we're not justified by any works whatsoever. I'm getting these quotes from a book called The Unquenchable Flame by Michael Reeves. It's an excellent book on the Reformation, not a big book, and I highly recommend it. He's an Anglican uh, from a Reformed background, the Church of England background, so he has no reason to distort these quotations or facts about Luther, Calvin, and so forth. This is what he says that they taught, and it's what you'll find un uh, bred in most denominations today. He says, in the Reformation mindset, salvation is a gift of God's grace alone, found not in any pope or mass, but in Christ alone and received by simple faith alone. He goes on to say, Luther and Calvin were emphatic that true saving faith would always produce such works of love. They were equally emphatic that such works were the consequence and not the cause of justification. Basically what you hear people say today, you're saved not because of your works, but you do good works because you're saved. Going on, he says, Luther took against the book of James for exactly this reason. He felt it was not full enough of Christ. One Sunday when the set Bible passage for the day was from James, he just read the text and then told the congregation, I don't want to preach on this, and went on to preach on something else. That's because James 2, verses 16 through the end of the chapter teach exactly the opposite of what Martin Luther and those that taught justification by faith alone with absolutely no works it taught the opposite of that, and so he called this book uninspired. One last quote. Luther said, Be a sinner and sin boldly. No sin will separate us from the Lamb, even though we commit fornication and murder a thousand times a day. Do you think that the purchase price that was paid for the redemption of our sins 
by so great a lamb is too small. And I just read that to show the consequence and the eventual conclusions you come to when you follow this theology, justification by faith alone on no part the responsibility of man. Now I'd like to show you just a couple of things from the middle ground, not the Catholic doctrine, not the Reformed doctrine of justification, but what we find in the Bible. This, I do believe, is how we help to identify the church of the first century.